All right, so since this year's um, theme is Earth, we decided to look into our own home, which is New York City, and this is the question that we had in mind, like how does climate change affect low-income neighborhoods in New York City? And through the data, we can see that annual temperature in New York City is rising, but how are different neighborhoods in New York City affected by the rising temperatures? Um, so when we look at um, the data from Landsat, we can see there are these pockets of heat um, in these neighborhoods, and these are called the urban heat island effect. And I'll take... Yeah. So what is the urban heat island effect exactly? So the, it's found in environments with uh, a lot of concrete, uh, asphalts, roads, pavements, and so on and so forth. The environment absorbs the heat from the sun and re emits that energy as heat. And so there's not enough vegetation to alleviate that problem, which results in higher temperature averages, especially in the summer months. So why are the hottest neighborhoods in New York City? We found out that the Bronx and the uh, Bronx in Brooklyn has the highest surface temperatures. So how does that in correlate to income level? So we can see that certain pockets of neighborhoods in Bronx and Brooklyn have some of the lowest uh, medium household income levels in New York City. So how does the urban heat island effect specifically impact low income neighborhoods? Uh, in general, excessive exposure to high heat can cause increased rates of uh, heat stroke and just heat associated mortalities in general. So, and low income people are especially vulnerable because of their lack of public access to air conditioners, more urban development due to gentrification, and poor housing quality in general. So what can we do exactly? So we suggest adding more green spaces to low income neighborhoods. A study in Chicago showed that vegetated areas provide relief from heat, the, the heat island effect caused by the heat trapping qualities of asphalt, concrete, and so on. So how would addressing the ecological impact of this phenomenon uh, improve the quality of life in low-income neighborhoods? So we suggested urban farming in, in particular. There are already organizations out there uh, leading this effort to educate people on urban farming, and better nutrition, and even managing a farmer's market such as Green Gorilla. So why urban farming in particular? We found out that in low-income neighborhoods, they are plagued by food inaccessibility. And according to uh, NYC.gov's uh, 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 definition, it's a lack of access to good nutritional foods for all members of that household. And this is the data that we found in uh, food insecurity in New York City. As you can see from the previous correlations that we've tabulated, uh, Brooklyn and the Bronx have the highest amounts of food insecurity in the city. So let's talk about the positive uh, impacts of urban farming. It increases food security, increases job creation and economic empowerment, decreases health risks, and minimizing the need for transportation from other farms. So what in particular? So throughout this uh, hackathon, uh, we were trying to come up with uh, different solutions to solve this problem in particular. However, we found out that it's so much, like, uh, it's so much big of a problem to solve beyond the, beyond the time of a hackathon. So we provide these solutions here. So uh, we, we, came, we came up with these three ideas here providing more data that shows positive benefits for urban farming, uh, uh, working with established organizations to expand their programs to other urbanized areas in New York City and, belong, and beyond, and creating an online platform that helps connect these organizations to share their proven methods of success and encourage people to mobilize in their own communities globally. So. Um, just to end, uh, we didn't come up That's with any. <laughs> yeah, we didn't come up with any <laughs> solutions. Uh, uh, but I think all the things that we've learned in the past 36 hours during this hackathon, um, I think these are important questions that we can ask ourselves when we are planning the next uh, generation um, sustainable cities. So.
Yeah, food insecurity affects uh, one of five households in America. So this is a huge issue. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy to overlook um, because, you know, food insecurity is like kind of a vague term. Like, wait, was that really? It's hard to, it's a, it's a very specifically defined term. So I, I like that you guys identified that. Um, and urban farming has a lot of benefits even beyond food security. Um, I, if you guys are going to take this kind of research a next step further, I'd love to see you explore uh, sea level change and see how that's going to impact uh, some of those areas as well. Um, I, I would say that uh, some of the wealthiest parts of New York are probably going to become some of the uh, greatest parts of Atlantis in the future. <laughs> so, um, how do, but how does that impact uh, the the uh, the planning and the the future of New York City? It, I think those, it's a cool next step for you guys to take if you're going to continue this research. Um, I, I think what you have here is a great like concept, you know, and, and I don't I think that getting there in 36 hours it's itself remarkable because the topic that you've considered is something that's being discussed, you know, I know we do it extensively at NASA, I work with Noah a lot on the urban heat island effect and I had a chance to talk to you on yeah. Friday and I, I mean, uh, you know, just to see that you got from urban heat island effect looking at the particularly vulnerable populations that are being affected by it and how you can tie in the food security problem to find a comprehensive of solution that addresses all of these challenges together I think that's wonderful um, do you have any you know I know you've identified the the solutions do you have any plans in the future as to what you're plan where you're going to take the project well like to be honest we were coming up with an actual like solution that we could show and demonstrate to everyone but um the organization that we point out green girls they already had that idea um, implemented word for word <laughs> for what we were planning. Which I think brought up the idea of that last point uh, because this thing already exists and we didn't know about it and it didn't, we, we literally found that out at 8 p.m. last night <laughs> because we have all of this thing that we wanted to present but like well we don't want to present something that already exists so yeah. I think that's the reason that we didn't just back out from the presentation itself because we were thinking about doing that is because I think it's just important, it's important to you know do the presentation anyway yeah. Yeah. just to Absolutely. Yeah, to get it out there and if you found out about it at 8 p.m. that means a lot of people don't know about it you right. know it's yeah, yeah. That's why we right we want so it would be great yeah. to you know find ways to either work with this organization mm -hmm. or work with work in ways to you know work in outreach for example for these topics since you are like aware of all the, the problems and and how they cross connect in these different issues so I, I think you know I think the that you found out this at 8 p.m. last night is a good thing to know and a good way to kind of take this to the next step. So yeah. that's great. And, and just real quick, um, uh, you know, I, 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 there's a lot of urban farming experiments that are occurring in the city. Yeah. Like it's, it's actually a really exciting time for, for urban and rooftop, rooftop farming. Um, and there are a number of like urban farms in, uh, in Bushwick, for example, right? I, I would love to see if there's any data on uh, the efficacy of urban farms reducing the damages of the urban heat islands, right? Because yep. it, you know, I, there there are there's a lot of complexity into increasing the number of urban farms, especially yeah. in some of these areas that are that are most uh, at risk from from the heat islands, right? And I I, I almost wonder if the urban farm is the best solution yeah. at all, in all cases. And I'm sure there's some data out there on that. Yeah, that's what we were trying to find. Like, actually, this one of the slides time. that we took out because of time constraint was like that there is actually more data that we need as yeah. far as urban farms goes because yeah. specifically for New York City because I think because they are so, they're pretty new. There's not, yeah. they haven't been collecting enough data so yeah. that they can possibly say that, oh, these are all the ecological <coughs> impacts. The thing that they measure like the the one we were, that we saw in the Chicago study is mostly on um, like green spaces. In yeah. General, so not not, not generally really just urban, urban farm farming specifically, and it's mostly not ecological impact specifically, just more like, like the food social. accessibility yeah. and the social economical uh, impact. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Great idea. Thank you for presenting. <laughs>